hello and welcome to my channel thank you for stopping by if this is your first time coming to my channel kindly subscribe and turn on the notification bell icon so you get notified anytime i post a new tutorial we are going to be drafting a pattern now there are certain things you need to know before drafting your pattern the first thing is your pattern is going to be on fold you fold it into two when you get your pattern you fold it into two now after you have folded it into two um Someone may ask, how do I know the amount to fold? If it is on fabric, how do you determine the amount to fold? You will use the widest part of your body. That is the horizontal measurement. What are horizontal measurements? They are measurements that go around the body. And in this case, the chest is the biggest, as in the widest measurement we have here. So you will take the widest measurement, you will divide it by four. The answer you will get, you are going to add two inches or three or four inches allowance that is the allowance in this lesson for me i'm going to be adding two inches my chest is 25 i divided it by four and i got 6.25 i added two inches and i got 8.25 as my answer so i will be folding my fabric or my pattern paper to 8.25 that is how to know the amount of fabric to use the widest part of the body you divide it by four plus your allowance. Your allowance could be three, to be four, depends on what you want. But for me, I'm adding just two inches to this. Now, after you have achieved that, you the next thing you're going to do is to get your starting line. For every pattern you want to draw, you must have a starting line. You must have a starting line. So you you there is no measurement for that. You can just draw a line. You can use any inch, half inch, 0 0.25. It's just a line to help you start. So this is our starting line. Now when you get this starting line, this line now becomes your shoulder line. This is where your shoulder is going to start from. So we will call it the shoulder line. After you have gotten the shoulder line, you get your shoulder to waist measurement. And in this measurement, our shoulder to waist is 11. So we are going to measure our shoulder to waist on both sides. This is 11. This is 11. And you draw you draw your line this one is now your waistline the next thing you're going to do is you're going to add your shoulder measurement your divided shoulder measurement so in this case the shoulder of my client is 10 inches you divide it by two and the answer is five and you are going to put your five inches here that is your divided shoulder measurement you divided the shoulder by two and you insert your shoulder measurement how do you now get the chest measurement now the next one is the chest measurement how are you going to get your chest measurement the chest measurement is around the chest but before you get your chest measurement you are going to calculate your armhole depth now what is an armhole depth an armhole depth is the distance between your shoulder and your chest line i made a small sketch here to to show you people the distance between your shoulder and this chest line is called the armhole depth so before we are going to get our chest line we are going to calculate this distance from here to here it is where the distance stops that becomes your shoulder line so how do you calculate your armhole depth in order to get the chest line so the calculation for the armhole depth is your shoulder divided by 2 plus 0 0.5 now why is it 0 0.5 your shoulder our shoulders whether children or adults are not straight they are slanting so the 0 0.5 is your slant you are going to remove a slant of 0 0.5 you are adding it so that it will not affect the armhole if you don't add this 0 0.5 by the time you put your armhole depth and you now subtract it you are going to have a very tight armhole so our shoulder divided by so this in this one our shoulder here is 10 we divide it by 2 and we got the answer of 5 plus 0 0.5 we got 5.5 now let me explain something um you know the shoulder is divided by 2 to get the shoulder line the armhole is also divided by two to get the armhole depth. So the, uh, your shoulder could be anything, maybe eight. You are still going to divide it by two. So the, the, the don't get confused with the armhole depth and the, the shoulder uh, measurement. So you get your armhole by dividing your shoulder by two. And whatever you get, you add 0 0.5. And that 0 0.5 is your shoulder slant. You are going to remove it to slant your shoulder. So let's calculate that. We have done the calculation and we got 5.5. So we are going to measure 5.5 downwards. This is 5.5 downwards. 
5.5. You are going to mark it on both sides so that you can get a straight you can get a straight line. So this is our chest line. Now the next thing you are going to do is to draw let's confirm it. This is um, is to draw do insert the shoulder distance from to insert the shoulder distance also on the chest line. I hope you understand. The distance you have inserted here, your divided shoulder measurement that you have inserted here, you are still going to insert it on the shoulder line, on the chest line. Why? So that you will get the armhole depth. So let's do a practical. Let's insert it so that you understand it properly. So we have now added. Um, so this is your armhole depth. And at this armhole depth, you are going to go down by 0 0.5. The, the 0 0.5 you added to remove your slant. So the next thing you are going to do is to insert your neck neck uh, width. Now the neck width is optional. There is no formula for neck width. You can decide, I want my neck to be V, I want my neck to be to be a canoe neck and any kind of neck you want. So there is no standard for neck depth and width. It's how you want it. But in this lesson, I'll be using 2.5 as my neck width and um, also 2.5 as my as my neck depth so if you have a ruler you can use your ruler and go ahead and curve it but if you don't have a ruler what you do is to insert the same measurement here the same 2.5 on this line and the same 2.5 on this line let me use a virus so that you will understand it if you don't have a ruler and you want to use your free hand you will measure it all round Then use your free hand and try to create the curve. But if you have a ruler, this um, um, ruler is for kids, both for the armhole and for the neckline. If you have your arm curve, you can now use it and create. Then at the shoulder, you are going to slant your shoulder from the neck width down, downwards. So you have gotten your neck depth, you have gotten your neck width, you have gotten your armhole depth. Now the next thing you are going to do is to find the middle point of this armhole depth and the middle point is two and a half you will mark the two and a half there and at that marking you're going to come inwards by let's say uh, 0 0.5 you're going to come inward by 0 0.5 then you are going to come to the chest line and insert your chest measurement and in this case our chest measurement is 25 we divided it by and we got 6.25 so you are going to insert the 6.25 on your chest line on your chest line and the next thing you are going to call your armhole you are going to call your armhole now we have gotten our armhole curve well, the next thing you are going to do is you are going to insert your waist, your divided waist measurement. So what is our divided waist measurement? 24. It's 24. You divide it by 4. You get 6. 6. And you are going to draw a straight line. So from here now, you can now add your sewing allowance. You can decide and add 2 inches sewing allowance. You can add three inches sewing allowance. Um, you can add one inch. In my own case, I'm going to add just one inch. Just one inch. Just one inch. And I'm going to draw. Let me use a different pen so that it will be visible for you to know that this is sewing allowance. Here is my pen. I hope it's visible. So you can add your sewing allowance. Mine is one inch. Then you can go ahead and add your sewing allowance on your pattern. You can add 0 0.5, that is half inch, down at the waistline, so that when you are cutting it, you there will be no need to add. There will be no need to add your sewing allowance again. So you see, you're, you're still going to add it at the shoulder here. So this blue pen 
indicates that this is our sewing allowance. You can add half inch sewing allowance. You can also go ahead and add it at the ample. So this blue line is our sewing allowance. You can decide. There are people who can also less than half an inch. You can make your sewing allowance to be 0 0.25. You can make it to be half an inch. But you cannot make it one inch on this other part except on the bodies. Now there's another thing I want to talk about. There are people who put that on their baby dresses. If you are in this class and you are putting that on your baby dresses, please stop it. You don't put that on baby dresses. Now, before you even argue with me, because there are some people who have learned it that way and they will argue with you. Before you argue with me, what is a that? And what do we use that for? You can go ahead and Google it. That are lines on our bodies. that They, they, they are used to shape our bodies. Most especially for people who have breasts. If you have breasts, those darts work for you. They create room for your breast and your figure to fit into your dress. So for children, they don't have breasts. Most children don't have breasts. So why are you putting darts on a child's dress? Because that is not a design. And it makes, there's a way it makes your dresses look like. So if you are here and you are putting that, and if you are not convinced, you can go ahead and Google it and ask why, what is the essence of putting that on a dress? So please, don't put that. That's why you see me. I didn't draft any that here. I don't put that on children's dresses. Except children who are beginning to produce breasts. My daughter started producing breasts at nine, year, nine years. For such children who are beginning to have those small, small tomatoes as breasts, for those children, you can add that. But not this front that. You can create a princess that for them. It's like you are using the method of sewing adult wears to sew for them. So if I have clients whose children have breasts, what I do is I, 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 I make create a princess dart for them, remove the darts to give room for their breast to fit in. If not, the, the, the top is going to be very tight at the chest. So I hope I'm making sense. If you don't understand it, you can still ask me more questions after watching this video. So this is our front bodies. We will be cutting our back bodies now. How I cut my back bodies is I take the front and I put it on another pattern paper and remove the back bodies. So... We'll do it in the next video. Okay. We want to cut our back pattern. We are finished. I was supposed to cut this thing while recording it. But unfortunately, my, my video wasn't recording and I didn't know. But I want to show you people so that you can see I where we added the allowance. That's how I cut it all around. This is the neck. I followed the allowance to cut it. Sorry, the video did not record and I've already cut it. So just for you people to see that I've trimmed it out. The next thing you're going to do is to draft your back bodies. And for me, my paper, because it's on fold, it's lifting up. So what I'll do is I'll use a pin to just hook it. Just for it to stay one place to help me draft my back bodies. So now I have my paper for my back bodies. What you are going to do, the first thing you are going to do is to decide how many inches allowance you want for your zip. So for me, I'm going to leave my zip at one inch allowance. So this is my one inch. This is my one inch, and I'm going to draw a straight line. I draw a straight line. So this is my zip allowance. So what I do is I will take the front pattern and paste it on the back pattern at this line leaving this space as my zip allowance this is like a shortcut and an easier way of this is how I, I i cut it very easy for me so i will use my pin and pin them down for accuracy and most of people that do free hand sewing 
this is the same method they, they use so i have pinned my front pattern to my back pattern so i can remove i can now cut it out so before you cut it out you are going to decide how you want your the, the neck the back neck depth to be you can decide to make it a v back you can decide to make it a high neck however you want to make your own back you are going to decide how you want it for me i want my back to be a v and i want my v to stop at my chest line so at this chest line i'm going to mark i'm going to draw and mark and extend and extend my chest line to my sewing allowance let me open it for you to see let me check if my video is recording properly so i have extended this line my chest line and this at uh, this chest line this is where i want my v back to stop you can make it lower you can make it downwards to the weight it depends on what you want now after doing that i have already marked it Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trace out this neck as a guide. This is a shorter and a quicker way of doing it. This is where the neck stops. I've made a mark there so that when I'm creating my V back, it will come and blend with this line. And mind you that our sewing allowance is already added to this front piece. So at this armhole, the back armhole is always longer than the front armhole. The front armhole is always shorter and the back armhole is always longer. And know that we have added our sewing allowance on this front pattern. And the sewing allowance is also going to appear on the back pattern. So what you are going to do is from the sewing allowance, you are going to, that is at the armhole, you are going to measure one inch downwards. You will just make a mark there. Then from the armhole, oh, did it show? From the armhole, you are still going to measure one inch. And you are going to add 0 0.25. Just to make it a little bit longer than the front armhole. So, uh, 0 0.25 sorry the 0 0.25 starts from here at this middle point then you are going to use a ruler or your freehand curl to curve it from where from where you marked one inch to where you marked one inch down to give I hope you understand let me go over it again the back armhole is always longer and the front armhole is shorter now we have added sewing allowance to our front pattern that sewing allowance is still going to be on the back uh, pattern if we do not add it both of them are going to be the same so we added 0 0.25 at the armhole to make it longer than the front armhole such that when we when we sew this half inch and we sew this half inch the back armhole is still going to be longer than the front armhole then when you do that the next thing you are going to do is to cut mind you I have not removed this one we are going to cut it first then when we now cut it we will remove the back Okay, it's cutting. This is what we have now. So now we want to remove 
our back neck depth. Another thing I want you people to understand is the back to waist is always shorter than the front. That means the shoulder to waist in front is longer. Why the shoulder to waist at the back is shorter. So we are going to remove half an inch at the waist on the back pattern. So the, to make it easy, you will just extend this half inch, this sewing allowance half inch here. And after you have done that, you are going to remove the front. You are going to remove The front pattern away and then I'm still going to pin it so that it will stay one place now if you look at this armhole by the time you sew it there's sewing allowance by the time you sew this it becomes it will enter inside and it will become um, just 0 0.2 inches longer than this front armhole so what we are going to do now is we are going to decide our V back. So I've already marked my marking here. I want my V back to stop on the chest line, which I extended it from the front back piece. So this line I made here was a guide so that my V will go and blend with it. So this is my V back. All sewing allowance are added inside. This is my V back. Now at this waist, I told you that we are going to shorten it by half an inch. You are going to slant it. Why? Because the back is always shorter than the front. So what you are going to do is you are just going to slant, slant it. When you slant it, Slant it and blend it to match. You slant it and you blend it. So here is shorter, but here measures the same measurements from here to here. The distance from here to here is the same, but at the center back, it's going to be shorter. So we are going to cut it out. And also we are going to cut out our so this is our pattern and we are going to use this pattern to cut our ball dress from, that, uh, from here we are going to we are going to draft the down part and but the down part, we are not going to draft it on a, a pattern because we will not get what we want on a pattern. I will be demonstrating it and you are going to, we are going to cut it direct on fabric 